Okay, we're here today to talk about uh, cover letters. And as you can see here, we have um, a document called a general cover letter template. Um, that's just the name of this particular uh, project that obviously would not end up on a cover letter. It would start right out with your mailing address. In this particular case, I really like this example because um, as you read through it, you'll see that it's not a case of, okay, I'll change this and I'll change that, and then it becomes mine, which, of course, leads it to everybody's letters looking and sounding the same. And that's not possible with this particular one because each area tells you what type of information belongs in that area. So we, we have the mailing address here. This is yours. Um, you can see we've even included how many spaces to put between a state and a zip, how many times to hit enter so that you get the correct spacing. And then you get down here to the employer. In this case, this is a cover letter that would go with a resume. But the recipient of the letter, um, their name and their address, again, the, the spaces. Here is an area that people make a big, you know, a lot of people make a mistake. Dear, in this case, it is a professional letter, so it's going to be Mr., Ms., Professor. Um, so it, because this is a formal letter, it's going to end with a colon, not a comma. A lot of people will say, dear Mr. Doe, and put a comma. That is wrong. Uh, Mr. Doe is followed by a colon always. If you are writing a letter to somebody um, and it was dear John, then it would, be a, it would be a comma. And I want you to see this here, this Ms. Err on the side of caution. When you are sending a letter to a woman that's not a professor, not a doctor, it is Ms. Okay, error on the side of caution. And then it goes on to say you are, you know, introduce yourself by explaining briefly why you're interested, blah, blah, blah. So these areas tell you the type of information that should be used in the, in the cover letter. Uh, the thing to remember about uh, a cover letter, it's not meant to have important facts that should be included in a resume. The cover letter is your chance to, to get their attention to let them know, you know, why you were interested in this field. Let them know where your interest, your passion comes from. Okay, uh, again, it's not meant to replace the resume, so don't have important information in here that they're not going to find on your resume. Because in my years of working in career services, I had employers tell me, not, not all, some employers say that they didn't read the cover letter unless they were confused about what you were looking for. You know, so there's always, there's always uh, the uh, you know, the folks that are going to do it a little different. So keep the really important facts in your resume. In the closing paragraph, uh, have a specific answer for uh, action for following up. I will call your assistant the week of, you know, put it on your calendar. Make sure you follow up. You need to know that in the job search, there are folks out there that will not respond to the initial contact. It's real easy to send out cover letters and resumes and then sit back and wait for an answer. And they know that. So they're not going to respond to that one. They're going to wait and see if you follow up. So tell them you're going to follow up. Make note of when you say you're going to do it and do it, okay? You know, um, thank them for their time and attention. And again, it tells you how many times to hit sincerely so you have a place to sign your letter. And then you print your name in case you have terrible penmanship like me. Here's some tips on here. Uh, to help you through your resume, I mean through your cover letter. So, um, you know, follow those and with you should have no trouble completing this project and having a good, strong cover letter. Okay?